In the rugged mountains and barren deserts of Yemen, a shadow looms over the land. It's a shadow cast, not just by the harsh sun, but by the weight of history, ideology, and unyielding conflict. In the midst of the mountains of Yemen are the Houthis, a group whose name reverberates across the fractured landscape of the Middle East. But who are the Houthis? What drives them? And what does their rise signify for the region and the world? Houthis belong to the Zaidi branch of Shia Islam. To understand the Houthis, we first need to know about Zaidism. Zaydis are a branch of Shia sect of Islam, but are distinct from the traditional Twelver Shia Islam, which is commonly practiced today in Iran and Lebanon. Surprisingly, the Zaydi beliefs are often said to bear more similarities to Sunni than to Shia Islam. Zaydis get their name from Zayd bin Ali, who was from the lineage of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He led an unsuccessful revolt against the Umayyad Caliphate, in which he died. The event gave rise to the Zaydiyya sect of Shia Islam. Zayd ibn Ali is also seen as a major religious figure by many Sunnis. For this reason, Zaydis have been quite tolerant to the Sunnis, which make up about half the population of Yemen. The Zaydis believe in imamat. They believe it is their duty to fight against unjust rulers. For the past millennia, Zaydis have lived in the highlands of Yemen, in the Sada province, under the leadership of an imam. The Zaydi Imamat in Yemen ended with the 1962 Republican Revolution after almost 1,000 years. In this revolution, the last Imam Muhammad al-Badr was overthrown. After the end of Zaydi Imamate in 1962, Ali Abdullah Saleh came to power in 1978. Although Ali Abdullah was a Zaydi himself, it was believed that he had deep ties with the United States and the Salafi Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Houthis say that this and many other policies of the Yemeni government made Zaydis feel marginalized. In the 1980s, Saudi Arabia tried to spread Salafism or Wahhabism into northern Yemen. They established Salafi institutes in northern Yemen. But this clashed with the long-standing beliefs of the Zaydi people who lived there. The Zaydi community was not happy. One Zaydi religious cleric, Hussein Badruddin al-Houthi, the founder of the Houthi movement, felt especially frustrated about this. He encouraged people to resist the Saudi influence and to protect their own Zaydi traditions. This resistance eventually grew into a bigger movement and the Houthi movement was born. But it wasn't until 2003 when the Houthis gained political attraction. Coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. These are opening stages of what will be a broad and concerted campaign. As the U.S. invaded Iraq in 2003, Houthis strongly opposed the invasion and their famous slogan emerged, God is the greatest, death to America, death to Israel, a curse upon the Jews, victory to Islam. Al-Houthi criticized Saleh calling him a puppet of the U.S. To suppress these anti-U.S. sentiments, Saleh sent troops to arrest al-Houthi, but they failed. The Houthis were frustrated, and an armed rebellion broke out known as the Houthi insurgency. A few months after that, in 2004, Hussein al-Houthi was killed by the Yemeni government. But his death only intensified the conflict, which would expand into a six-year-long civil war. Since his death, the conflict has been led by his brother, Abdul Malik al-Houthi. The insurgency continued for the next six years, causing thousands of displacements 
and hundreds of casualties. In 2009, tensions along the Saudi-Yemeni border escalated as Houthi rebels from northern Yemen launched attacks into Saudi territory. The conflict led to a series of clashes between Houthi fighters and Saudi forces, resulting in casualties on both sides. In 2010, a ceasefire agreement was reached, temporarily halting the fighting along the border. In January 2011, thousands of Yemenis took to the streets of Sana'a, demanding President Saleh to step down due to the rising poverty and unemployment in the country. The Houthis joined the protest, and Saleh had to step down as president after 33 years. After Saleh, the new president, Mansour Hadi, also backed by the Saudis, had trouble stabilizing the economy. Inflation and unemployment began to skyrocket, leading to an economic crisis. The Houthis saw their chance and re-emerged, retaking their control over more territory. By November 9, 2011, they were reported to have taken control of two Yemeni governorates, Saada and al Jaf and were close to capturing a third, Hajar. This would have given them a strategic position to potentially launch an attack on the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. In 2014, the Houthis began a series of demonstrations in Sana'a against increased fuel prices. This provoked a new rebellion. This time, they unexpectedly formed an alliance with their former rival, Ali Abdullah Saleh. He saw them as a means of getting himself back into power, and what he brought to the Houthis was of some parts of the Yemeni military that were still loyal to him. So it was a very convenient alliance for the two of them, for the Houthis and for President Saleh. The Houthis, together with some Yemeni military, stormed the capital Sana'a in 2014 and were met with little resistance. In just a week, the Houthis captured the capital. This led to the civil war, which hasn't stopped to this day. The civil war began in September 2014, when Houthi forces took over the capital city, Sana'a, which was followed by a rapid Houthi takeover of the government. President Hadi fled to Saudi Arabia and sought help from Riyadh. King Salman of Saudi Arabia saw the Houthis as a dangerous and an important pawn in the proxy war against Iran. Saudis formed a coalition with other Gulf nations backed by the US, UK and France and began strikes on the Houthis. Operation Decisive Storm was underway, headed by then Defense Minister Mohammed bin Salman but it was far from being swift and effective as they planned. The humanitarian situation has become desperate. Since 2015, almost 400,000 people have been killed and 85,000 Yemeni children have died from starvation. The conflict has also led to widespread displacement, with millions of Yemenis forced to flee their homes in search of safety and shelter. Roughly 80% of the Yemen population, containing over 12 million children, requires humanitarian aid. The international community has called for an end to the conflict and a peaceful resolution to the crisis in Yemen. However, achieving lasting peace remains a daunting challenge. On March 20, 2022, the United Nations announced that the Yemeni government and the Houthis agreed to release detainees after negotiations in Switzerland. They also agreed to allow families to visit those in jail and plan for more prisoner exchanges. The UN in Yemen said the situation is improving and moving towards resolving the conflict. This happened after China helped Saudi Arabia and Iran make peace a week before. This ceasefire has largely held since then. Following the outbreak of the 2023 Israel-Hamas war, the Houthis began to fire missiles at Israel and attack ships off Yemen's coast in the Red Sea, which they say is in solidarity with the Palestinians.
on the 31st of October, Houthi forces launched ballistic missiles at Israel, which were shot down by Israel. In order to end the attacks in the Red Sea, the Houthis demanded a ceasefire in Gaza and an end to Israel's blockade of the Gaza Strip. In January 2024, the United States and the United Kingdom conducted airstrikes against multiple Houthi targets in Yemen. The U.S. has launched new airstrikes on Iranian-backed militants. The targets included logistical hubs, air defense systems, and weapon storage areas used by the militants. It is, of course, the potential for a big escalation of the growing conflict in the Middle East. The path forward remains uncertain with the specter of geopolitical tensions and internal divisions casting a long shadow over the nation's future. The coming years will determine whether lasting stability and prosperity can be achieved or if Yemen will continue to be plagued by strife and uncertainty. Oh!